Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about one of the service models of cloud computing, which is identity as a service. So it is quite different than the other three models of cloud computing that we have seen earlier, which are nothing but SSAS, PAS and IAS. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I hope you already know that employees in a company requires to log in for performing various tasks. So this system may be based on local server or cloud based. So as you already know in the recent days because of the pandemic lockdown, the transition to work from home has been the great way for companies to work remotely while maintaining the safety of the employees. This credit goes all to the cloud computing. But there are many problems that employees might face such as remembering different username and password combinations for accessing multiple servers as well as if employee leaves the company, it is required to ensure that each account that user was using should be disabled. So this increases the workload on IT staff. So to solve these problems, a new technique emerged which is known as identity as a service. So IDAS offers management of identity information as a digital entity. So this identity can be used using the electronic transactions. So what really is the identity? So identity refers to the set of attributes which are associated with something to make it recognizable. So all the objects may have same attributes but their identities cannot be the same. So a unique identity is assigned through a unique identification attribute. So there are several identification services that are deployed to validate services such as validating websites, transactions, transaction participants, client etc. So they may include this following services such as directory services, federated services, registration, authentication services, risk and event monitoring, single sign on services and identity and profile management. So now we will talk about single sign on service which is also called as SSO. So to solve the problem of using different username and password combinations for different servers, companies now employ a single sign on software which allows the user for login only one time and manage the access of other systems. So let's consider if you are an employee in a company and if you need to connect with your colleague as well as at the same time if you want to check your payroll or if you want to access the HR server or else you want to schedule a meeting. Earlier you should need to log in to each and every application by using your username and password. But SSO has a single authentication server which manages the multiple access to other system. So it is shown in this figure here. So here are the different applications and services that we can log into via the single sign on servers and you don't need to remember credentials of all your accounts. So it is very convenient to use. So now we will see how the single sign on actually works. So there are several implementation of a SSO that we will discuss one by one. So these are the steps that I have given which shows you the working of single sign on software. So first the user will log into the authentication servers using their username and password. After that the authentication servers returns a user's ticket and the users send that ticket to the intranet server. After that this intranet server sends the ticket to the authentication server and this authentication server will further send the user's security credentials for that server back to the intranet server. So this is the process of SSO authentication and you can also refer this figure to get to know how this process is working. So if an employee leaves the company then disabling the user account at authentication server prohibits the user's access to all the systems. So it will save the IT staff work. Our next topic is federated identity management. So this FIDM describes the technologies and protocols that enables a user to package security credentials across the security domains. 
so it uses the security markup language also called as SAML to package a user security credentials as shown in this figure that I have given here. And now it's time for our last topic of today's lecture which is open ID. So open ID nothing but it offers the users to log into the multiple website with single account. So Google, Yahoo, Flickr, MySpace and WordSpace are some of the companies that support open ID right now. So it has many advantages such as increased site conversion rate, access to a greater user profile content, also the fewer problems with lost passwords and the ease of content integration into the social networking sites. So these are some benefits of using open ID. So in this lecture we have seen what is identity as a service in cloud computing and we have seen what is identity, also the different identity services. After that we have seen what is single sign on and how it works. We have also seen the federated identity management and what is a open ID with their benefits. So I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media that I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.